So we are now welcoming Peter Lavelle, and he is an awesome journalist. He is the host of Crosstalk on RT, and I'm so glad that he has been willing to speak to us and is participating in this vigil. Uh, Peter, hi, how are you doing? Uh, you're muted. One moment. You're muted. Uh, basically, Zoom does this to every single panelist. You just have to press. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Awesome. First time I'm doing it this way, so I'm yeah. learning. Okay. Not a problem. Now, to what Kim had to say, absolutely fascinating and fascinating. Excellent questions on your part, and I know a lot about asking questions, so go right ahead. Yeah, well, I wanted to ask, um, when did you first become aware of WikiLeaks, and how did you become drawn to uh, you know, supporting them and supporting Julian Assange's work? Well, Private Manning, when, you know, the great um, uh, documents dump, you know, with Afghanistan and the, and the infamous uh, video to this day. Um, I remember very vividly how uh, the quote unquote mainstream media was actually uh, not, maybe not sympathetic, but very curious about all of this, Julian Assange. I can remember doing programs on it and people couldn't even pronounce his last name because, they, you know, they, this was such a, a out of the blue story. And... Um, um, of course, it was very valuable uh, kind of information because I was, and, and people that I know were always against those wars. And then to finally learn the truth that we, you know, we were pretty much on mark, you know, all the lies that we were told, all the fabrications. So um, it's a, such a valuable source um, and it has woken up a lot of people. But because people are being woken up, there's a lot of pushback from the deep state. Um, the deep state exists to watch people like us watching this um, a podcast. Well, it's not to find terrorists. No, not at all. It's to keep tabs on us because they're afraid of us. Okay. I mean, uh, fighting terrorism, then why, are they, why have they supported ISIS from the very, very beginning in Syria? I mean, it's all a farce. Okay. What they're Absolutely. doing is massive surveillance of us. Julian Assange and WikiLeaks have told us so much about that. Um, and it has shown uh, how much the deep state um, uh, fabricates, lies, and punishes people that speak out. And that's exactly what they do. Uh, we're, we have to do this right now. And, um, you know, on a good day, I'm slightly optimistic. Usually I'm pretty pessimistic about it because of all of the tech companies um, throttling people like ourselves. I know it was that um, uh, proper not thing that came out um, after Trump was elected. I was affiliated with three of the institutions. I think I got on more than anybody else, okay? Um, and so, you know, and I see it in my Facebook. I think I, I see things being deleted all the time. My program, for example, two or three weeks later, there's an algorithm that just takes it away. People, they don't want people to watch it. Um, so, um, you know, I follow Julian Assange and WikiLeaks from the very, very beginning because it has replaced media. I mean, we, WikiLeaks came into being because it had to be invented because of the, uh, of the um, low scale, low quality, um, very uh, uh, maniacal mainstream media because they've been fused into power. There's no difference anymore. I mean, I, uh, I'll betray my age by saying this. I remember the, the uh, end of the Vietnam War and people like Walter Cronkite at CBS you have to remember, you know, the mainstream media, uh, the, the, the uh, television networks, and of course the, the uh, uh, print media, they, they went along with Johnson. They went along with it. They always go along with it. And then Walter Cronkite and people like Wal Walter Cronkite, they went to Vietnam and they said, uh, this doesn't make any, you're telling me this. I'm reporting this because you tell us this. It's not true. And he was one of the great souls uh, of the profession that said, no, I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna carry water for the Pentagon anymore. And he started that push. And then we had Watergate, where we had, um, you know, again, you know, a democracy dies in darkness. They were sunlight. My God, those days are completely gone. And Remember, what do you think uh, has uh, caused that? Yeah, well, well, no, I think it's greed. Uh, I think it's careers. Uh, mediocre people get uh, um, uh, elevated so high. You know, you, you got perfect hair, perfect teeth, smile, and just read the script. And you know, you'll be fine. You'll be famous. You'll be taken care of. You don't have to think much. You know, it, exactly. It, it, I mean, it, it, it's exactly that way. I, you remember Chris Cuomo? You know, you yes. you shouldn't be reading yes. these uh, um, uh, leaks because uh, well, they're private property. But I will interpret them for you. That guy's going to interpret yes. for me. Are you serious? Really? 
absolutely I mean, I ridiculous. I believe he would actually say something that on live television, I mean, the clown network news, they're going to tell me how to think. Uh, you know, and then you look at these um, um, uh, former FBI, CIA, NSA people. Now they're pundits on the, on the, on the cable stations. I mean, yeah. This is just, this is incestuous. Openly. It's, they and, don't and, even have a pretense of being separated. Yeah, they they do it shamelessly. It's shameless now. Okay. And they get to peddle whatever uh, conspiracy theory they want. They can destroy any individual. Uh, they can, everything is, I hate to use the word, trumped up these days. Okay. Um, and that is actually a defense of Donald Trump. I abhor many things that he says, what he does. Uh, I understand why he was elected. Um, but having, again, this is just another uh, step of just uh, fusing the deep state uh, with corporatism. And the media is just their cheerleader here. They spied on his campaign. There's, that's obvious right now, okay? But it tells you what they're capable of doing and what they will do. And, and I agree with what Kim said earlier. They're going to make sure they don't get caught next time, okay? Because they got really sloppy because they're arrogant. They, they, uh, they, they, they believe that they have all power and they know they can punish. So I, I, I agree with Kim. They're going to make sure they're not caught the next time around. And, but we have to worry about Twitter and Facebook, all of these things. They were supposed to be a great liberating element for us. Like, remember, a level playing field where this would be the ultimate expression of democracy, where everyone has a voice. Um, and it's, it's really tragic to see how these, uh, these quote unquote liberals, and I, I know this is bipartisan, so I won't break the peace here, um, but um, it's really sad how technology at one point in the beginning was such a beacon of hope and it's actually turned into a tyranny. And, and again, that's why Julian Assange and WikiLeaks is so absolutely necessary. You know, there was a, there's a German philosopher, his name is Habermas, and he, he talked about the development of the public sphere. And actually WikiLeaks is that because the public sphere were individuals communicating with each other. And, and, and sometimes it was very uh, mundane, like uh, when ships would come into port and what time, what are they carrying? And people start making entrepreneurial decisions. And this, the state wasn't controlling it. The church wasn't controlling it. These were people coming out and communicating with people like themselves. And so we, we have this new wave. WikiLeaks is like that. It's a new uh, uh, center where people can go and communicate and, and believe and trust. You know, Julian Assange has not, never given anyone up. And everything that he's done that I am, I'm aware of, he's always been right. There's been no fabrication, no lies. He doesn't carry water for anyone. And, you know, he's got a good road record. Nobody can stand up to that road record. And on top of it, the, the, the physical pain that he must be going through, not being able to see, uh, see his children grow up, his health issues. These are human rights issues. Um, the blatant uh, breaking of the law and this, the crass hypocrisy. Uh, from uh, from the U.S. and the U U.K. governments. So we have to talk about Julian Assange. We have to talk about WikiLeaks because it is one little ray of hope out there in a sea of darkness. Absolutely. And, and as a journalist who's been observing this from the outside, what do you think about the, the active silencing of press freedoms of Julian Assange? He's literally being prosecuted for doing his job, as Kim said earlier. Um, what how did we get here in journalism? I mean, I, I know you mentioned earlier uh, that shift from, you know, democracy dies in darkness over to this corrupt, openly shameless um, situation that we have. So what do you think was behind that? Or is it just so, sort of natural? Well, it, it's the, the national security state, okay? Um, you know, you're just going to have to trust me. You know, I know better. I mean, it's, it's really quite incredible. And I understand how people, I mean, it's from time immemorial, you know, we can go back to ancient Greece and Rome, you'll give up your freedoms for security. Okay, it's nothing new. And it's being played out again. But at least in the West, there was a tradition of, of holding power to account. Um, and, Absolutely. Um, and, that, and this is what we, we used to call journalism, real journalism. And um, th that role has, has been fused into the state and, and, and it's been left benign. And now it, 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 just, it, it just peddles, um, uh, I mean, it's clickbait, it's uh, uh, shifting the topic, determining the narrative. I mean, they're very, they're useful idiots. And, and, the, and, and talking about real issues is not what the news does anymore. 
Because if you Absolutely. really talk about the real, what's really going on, that might cause debate. And debate might talk about policy. But it's never that, okay? I'm sorry, uh, Roseanne lost her show, but I don't care. I don't. Yeah, I, we see that with so many narratives that are pushed over and over again and are not substantial and don't affect the vast majority of the American public at all. At least uh, that's the way it seems. But, you know, and, and also, you know, is it um, one of the things you could look at the the uh, the um, the 2003 illegal invasion of Iraq. That's a very interesting tipping point because people were embedded. No, they were in bed. OK. Um, and they were perfectly willing to go along with it. And because I remember, again, uh, betraying my age, I remember, uh, uh, and it was still black and white TVs, I remember, every single night watching the carnage of, uh, of Vietnam. And when people saw, saw that, I said, but why? You know, what are we getting out of this? And so, if, if, if and there were journalists that did go to Iraq, uh, they had their accreditation fiddled with, uh, they didn't get protection. I mean, they, they, they made it tough to be, a, a journal. Robert Fisk is a, a good one that comes to my mind. Okay, fearless, you know, fearless. You know, he didn't carry water for anyone, uh, but he's in a minority. Everyone else, it's just like a junket. It's a lifelong junket. And and if you look at the revolving door of people going in from from the state, from media, um, from uh, arms uh, producers, it's all revolving. Everybody takes care of everybody because. You know, particularly my, my you know, I've, I've been living abroad for most of my life, not my adult life, most of my life. And so I'm not really up on the nuances of, uh, of domestic U.S. policy or U.K. or something like that. I'm much more interested in international politics and, uh, you know, the, no debate on foreign policy. And I think that's really, really uh, tragic because... We, wars are fought for, uh, you know, it's interesting, you know, they, they, a country is targeted as a threat, they destroy the country, and then they make the taxpayer rebuild it so we can do it all over again. And, exactly. and that's exactly what it is. It goes over and over again. So there's no, there's no debate here. Um, the, I think also when it comes to media, there's, a, and again, I don't want to be partisan here. I, I don't want to break the peace, but there, it, it's, it's very, very, one-sided ideologically speaking okay well actually I, that's not I, partisan I, I, as all I'm conservative i feel that conservatives are being uh, whacked left and right for having their opinions and i want to have civil discourse very civil i mean some of my best friends are progressives you know why because we can have a real conversation exactly yes real. No, that's well i i think that um mo i think Virtually all of our panelists would agree that there is sort of this establishment core that doesn't really subscribe to left or right ideology. And so that's why it's so important to unite together against that, because that's what they're doing to us. Um, but I also think that going to your point earlier about the uh, the revolving door that between the financial sector, journalism, the intelligence agencies, um, in what ways do you think the, the WikiLeaks case evolving over the years, you know, with you having followed it from the beginning, has been unique in exposing that revolving door because it's opened my eyes to the reality of how the banking sector and the, the private corporations and then the military are all so interrelated in their attacks on WikiLeaks. I, I think it's, it's interesting, and probably for a lot of people, for yourself, myself, and a lot of people watching this, we already, we already, uh, we all um, had suspicions that all of this was true because we were called conspiracy theorists. Remember? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, we were all conspiracy theorists, and then with these uh, WikiLeaks, like I was pretty much on the mark. I mean, I, I've talked to over the last decade, you know, talking to people, you know, in in. And the thing is, my, I, I instinctively thought the, security, the national security state was to spy on all of us, or people that were politically uh, interested and active. Um, so that was a confirmation of it all. I think this is what the, the uh, ruling elites, the, the financial sector, the Hollywood, uh, everyone, is that it's kind of blue, you know, Julian Assange blew the cover off. And it's, it's not pretty what everybody sees. It's not pretty. And, exactly. and, they, and, 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 and they have no explanation for it. They, they, can't, they can't say, oh, you caught me. No, they can't say that because then they all go to jail, as they should, okay? But, and, 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 and who's in jail right now? I mean, in, in every sense, Julian Assange is in jail. And um, uh, they will get rid of him. I'm sorry to say this, maybe I shouldn't, but they're going to do everything they can to eliminate him to the, to the ultimate degree, unfortunately. I they think, will not allow yeah. him. They will not allow him because it, it, it will set a precedent. You know, you can't get away with it. We will make you suffer. 
okay? And Julian is, is, is really uh, uh, sacrificing himself for, for the ultimate cause. You know, again, you know, I don't want to get too ideological here, but, you know, the, the, one of the very pillars of the civilization that is so criticized now in the West is freedom of speech of the sovereign individual. Here's a sovereign individual speaking, the logos. It goes to the very beginning, all right? And, and, and having him shut down an attack like this is, an, is the ultimate attack on our traditions, okay? And I, 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 it is unconscionable, unconscionable. You know, Tommy Robinson, somebody I wouldn't, you know, I don't like him, I don't like what he says, but the way he was treated by the, by the British police, that's wrong. We have to stand up and say, you can't do that. We have due process. We need sunlight. We need to have everyone seeing what's going on. It's just, it happens more and more often. Unfortunately for Julian Assange, he's the most blatant case of people denied a due process. And a lot of people know it, but they don't have the integrity of the guts to say, this is wrong. It, it, resolve the issue. Um, uh, have an open trial, if that's even possible. Again, I was listening to Kim.com. I tend to agree with him that he wouldn't be able to get a free trial. Um, I, I think that, you know, I, I know uh, Julian has Ecuadorian citizenship. I think the international community, community should recognize that. Let him leave the embassy, get on an airplane and go to Ecuador, okay? His destination, that's where he wants to go. And that should be the case. Look what happened to Snowden. Okay, he didn't want to come to where I live. That wasn't his destination, but he had his passport pulled, okay? And he is here, okay? So um, again, he should be allowed to uh, go to a destination where he wishes to go. Um, it, it, it's, I guess what really is so sad for me is that Julian Assange's case is so well known if you want to know about it. And, it take, and that's why I, can, I don't usually do these things, go to these podcasts, but it, for me, it was I have to stand up for what I think is right, okay? It doesn't mean I like everything that Julian has done or said. No, it's a principle. What happened to principles in our public life? Everyone is so cowed and so afraid. Um, and I, I refuse to live like that. And I think a lot of people watching this feel the same way. And I hope we can get more people. You know, um, I, 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 I have a feeling that when I uh, uh, advertise this on Facebook, I have a feeling that it was throttled because I asked a few people about it. So they're yes, watching. We've, they're we've watching. been experiencing a lot of shadow banning and, and censorship on Twitter of this event and of the, the hashtag associated with it. Definitely. No, it, it's a definite attempt to strangle this message getting out. But that's why it's more important than ever to speak as loudly as we possibly can. And what do you, um, I know that, we, you know, we've had the privilege of speaking with you and uh, Ross Cameron earlier, both journalists with large platforms that care about, as you said, principles and in that way supporting Julian Assange. What is it that is unique about you all and your choice to speak out for Julian Assange that so many other journalists don't make that decision? Well, I mean, there should be more journalists speaking out for Assange, is I guess what well, I'm trying to say. I, I, think, I think you're right, and I think jur uh, journalists are, are very shameful. I mean, uh, you know, particularly before we did this, I went through um, YouTube last night and I looked at all of the condemnations of journalists of Julian Assange, which I just, what a portrayal of the profession. But, you know, and they get paid really well for it. Journalism wasn't a really well-paid profession before. I mean, it, it was people of passion. You know, it was people of passion that really wanted to do it. Now that people cash in on it, okay, it's cable TV and, you know, um, uh, all, all, um, uh, some YouTubers are pretty good at it and stuff like that. Um, well, then there's like think, two, com two or three companies owning the entire news. I have the luxury where I don't, I don't have to worry. I don't have to look over my shoulder. Okay, I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm more free than most journalists, I suppose, because um, uh, I'm given a, a, a blank check, just do whatever I want to do, and I, I really like that. Uh, I think a lot of other people, uh, particularly in the um, multimedia, I'm thinking about television. Um, um, you know, and, and some of the podcasts that the major newspapers do and things like that. They're afraid of, for their career. Um, nobody wants to get out of line. It's not worth it. Um, uh, um, y these people supported the invasions of Afghanistan and, and uh, uh, Iraq. They don't want to admit that they were wrong. They don't want to admit that they actually were carrying water for the Bush administration or what happened in Libya. Nobody wants to own up to their um, uh, uh, their words and their behavior because then you'd have to have a lot of introspection and kind of look at what kind of person you are. 
And it's too easy just to say, well, he violated national security. Well, I mean, all of our security is at stake when one man like Julian Assange is silenced. People got to make that connection here. You have to make that connection. And if you don't, then you're in denial. People are in denial. And Absolutely. It's, it's so easy to be in denial when they, you know, they they dangle little uh, 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 trinkets in front of your eyes, okay? And people go for it, okay? And that's why the moral integrity of journalism is just it just dropped through the floor. I remember growing up, you know, look at you know Carl Bernstein and people like that. I mean, I don't know him, but my, he seems to have portrayed everything about journalism since the, since the Watergate. I mean, I watch him on cable TV, and it's just like. What happened? What happened to you? Where's your skepticism? You were skeptical. You didn't believe the state. You didn't believe uh, uh, fake narratives that were fed to you. You followed up on it, but it's gone. Poof, it's gone. So true. And I have a question from our viewers, actually. And one of them asked, uh, now that the U.S. military is in Ecuador, or uh, I think correcting that it would be that they've made a, a deal with Ecuador, should he, should Assange go there if given the chance? And will that be safe for him? I, I would like to hear your thoughts on that. Well, um, uh, that's a, obviously, that's a personal decision that Julian has to make. Um, the, the, the thing is, okay, I don't, I don't, I, I, I'll give a quick example, kind of answer the question. You know, on two different occasions, um, a ceasefire was arranged in uh, Syria. And on both occasions, a false flag operation was invented to break it up. And it was the US that did that. They broke their word, obviously, openly. So if the US said they promised an airplane would leave London to make it to Ecuador, I don't know. I, I just, I'm sorry. I, the, the track record is just way too long. Um, I, 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 there has to be another way of doing it. And I don't know what way that would be. I don't, okay? But um, I, I just wouldn't trust. There are too many people in the U.S. Uh, security apparatus uh, that have it out for Julian. And, 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 and they, they, they will hunt him down to the very, very end. Because these people are pathological. They're pathological. You can't deal with them, you can't communicate with them, oh, because you end up being somebody's puppet, somebody's mouthpiece, you know, uh, you know a, a useful idiot. See, you can't, that's, what, that's what's so sad for me is that I, I always tell people, you know, just give me 30 minutes of calm, you know, just two, one-on-one, -on -one, and I can maybe change your world just a little bit, maybe to engage the conversation a little bit further. But no, there's this, this wall, you know, can't talk to that person, can't talk to that person, can't consider that thought, okay? And this is what we've got, uh-oh, can you hear me? I can't hear you though. Sorry, I was muted. Yeah, I was gonna right. say, uh, that reminds me of the purity test. So if you're friends with so-and-so, I can't talk to you. And, and the way that that builds these echo chambers that we all reside in these little separate bubbles that can't interact and, uh, you know- but That's design, that's yeah, by design. Exactly, exactly. You know, the, the thing is, is that I uh, always, when I come across um, the liberals and progressives, uh, I have a, 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 a great time with it. If there's good will, if there's good faith, then it, it can be fascinating. Talking to other conservatives gets boring for me because we disagree on too much. Yeah, it's an echo chamber. And that's why it's so important what we're doing here is to bring those different uh, perspectives and, and bubbles together and to cross those barriers because it is so easy to fall into that. Um, do you have any thoughts on what viewers can do? Because I, I, you know, we we recognize that there is so much censorship, that there is so much pushback against support for Julian. But the one positive thing is that it, the gagging of Julian is causing a, a backlash, which is uh, the increased support for Julian Assange in light of the obvious persecution of him. So how do you think people can capitalize on that positive energy? Well, I, I think what, you know, I think there are those of us that have followed the story and we know what, what, what's really at stake here, but I think at least maybe to get more people interested in Julian Assange is, is, is the gross violation of his human rights. That's a, one way to start. It's Absolutely. one way to start. OK, you may not like his ideas. You may not like what he has done. But look, he's, he's being persecuted by the state. And, and, we, and, and it seems to me that everything is contrived. It contrived uh, on this, this statute, this law. I mean, they're making, it seems like to me, they're making laws to, for him to break, OK? Or, or inventing them somehow. Uh, I'm not a lawyer, so be careful. But um, I think just a, an awareness of his, the, the human side of the story, and that might interest people. Um, 
you know, the way he's been betrayed, uh, uh, what was it? He should be shot. He should be. Yes. Um, yes. We, I, I'm surprised that more people haven't reported on that. Disability Media actually did write an article when uh, Julian Assange, before he was gagged, it was last year, actually compiled a very long thread of all of these pundits and journalists calling for him to be executed and torture of WikiLeaks staff. It was you know awful. What? You know what? If you were to say something like that to me on this podcast right now, you know, threatening my life or my livelihood. The, the, uh, someone should call the, the organizer of this platform and have you banned because you shouldn't be doing that. But you can do that on, on cable TV, okay? Exactly. And, and then not only that, people echo it. It's, it's, it's like pile on, who can be more cruel, okay? And I, for me, that for people that do that, if they've lost their humanity, they've sold their soul, for fame and fortune, okay? I mean, you know, what is it? Rachel Maddow makes so, over $30,000 a night spewing a very one-sided narrative. Again, I don't want to break the peace, okay? Oh, no, it's but, totally you know, fine. Um, okay. I, don't, I don't think um, many, I, I think, you know, as somebody who voted for uh, Bernie Sanders and Jill Stein, I have no love for Rachel Maddow whatsoever. So that's that's totally not a problem. Yeah, but, but, and, and I, what, yeah. But what they are doing to Julian, you see, it, it's just not that, it's just not the rule of law. I mean, and now I'm going to go after your heartstrings right now. Is it's that, you fine. Know, it's no, fine. Nobody, nobody wants to, you know, it's this. It's only people like us on platforms like this that want to talk. And I see you had H.A. Goodman on. Great guy. I love that guy. H.A. is you know, awesome. You know, you, know, you know, democracy, you know, openness. I mean, in, in broad daylight, it's stolen from Bernie Sanders in broad light. You know, exactly. Broad, everybody knows it. We all know it. Nobody wants really to talk it. about it. And, the, and this is this corrosive effect. People that follow Julian Assange's story know he's being done wrong, and we all know that. We know that it's a human rights violation, what they're doing to him, we all know that. There's so many obvious truths out there. They stole the election from Bernie, okay? Um, yeah, the deep state was probably fiddling with the 2016 election, we all know that. Um, but you know, it's it, it never front and center, because you know why? If you deal with Julian Assange and WikiLeaks, and you deal with it honestly, then you have to ask a lot more questions about yourself and what you think and how you feel about it and uh, um, what's it going to do to your career. So this is, this is from a journalist point of view, this is what I see so much um, is, uh, oh, why did you write that art? Why did you have that title on your article? Oh, I didn't do that was my editor. Well, but it, it's misleading. What your, your whole article, the title is misleading to the whole, the whole article. Why don't you step up? and say you're you're fiddling with my intellectual content but nobody has the courage to do that yeah the no. cowardice is amazing to witness and the and the unwillingness to raise your own head up above the crowd and say this is wrong it's really really sad a sad comment on the state of journalism and, and I, you know i think i think julian assange said this um, a number of times that essentially journalism and i think you said this earlier in the segment but essentially journalism is dead in the sense of the way that it was in or what we consider journalism as you were saying a, a check and balance against the state it's pretty much literally an organ of the state now um, in every way possible as we discussed well, with the blatant yeah, cia pundits etc cetera, etc cetera. but that's but that's what creates totalitarianism okay exactly. and you know you know what, and, and i'll tell you and i'll tell viewers here Okay, I'm not I'm not like these uh, pundits on cable TV that talk about things that they have not they know nothing about. I lived in uh, communist Eastern Europe for many years in Poland. I traveled all through the Eastern Bloc. I know what it means when the media is an arm of the state. I've seen I saw it with my own eyes. Okay, and it ain't pretty. Okay, and and that's why there were underground presses. I remember living in communist Poland, and I helped people with that because I truly believe that you needed to have freedom of speech, okay? And, 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 that's, and that's what's happening here. The thing is, is that it's, I guess it's because we have commercials and we have well, uh, Stormy Daniels and all that. I mean, authoritarianism and to totalitarianism just comes with a smile or as a joke, okay? Exactly, and yes, I think it's, it's packaged sugar, as entertainment. Sugar-coated. Okay, and let's have a let's have an um, up close and personal story about this person. No, I want policy. I need a discussion about policy. I don't need you to give me a cup and fill my tears with it. Okay, and that's what they do all of the time. But no, Julian Assange is a monster. See how extreme everything gets. It, 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 you don't, you, the facts don't matter. It is the spin. It's the spin is what matters. Okay.
And we, you know, and, you know, he's a monster, and we'll never let, let anyone have let this happen again because he will be an example. They even say it, it, he will be an example. No, due yeah. process. We still and, have. And the, laws. and the constant hyperbole, like you're talking about, with uh, especially with Julian Assange, it desensitizes us, the viewers, to facts. Yeah. We don't even, the facts are, are dull and boring compared to these buzzwords that we're just fed constantly. And so they just slip through the cracks and, and they get forgotten. And there's so much of the history of Julian Assange, not only of the persecution of, of WikiLeaks, but of the, the support for WikiLeaks and the support he provided for people like Edward Snowden. So much history is just lost because it disappears amongst all of those buzzwords that we pay attention to. Well, the, the, the thing is, is that one of the reasons why um, we have the, the low quality journalism that we have now is um, the, the, the powers that be, um, uh, the tech companies, Hollywood, uh, the financial system, they're basically saying to uh, what, what we can use the term legacy media is that we'll get you your monopoly back, but it comes with a price, okay? So, we, so on the major cables, you know, you can stay, have a little a variety there. Okay, you can have uh, Rachel Maddow and you can have Carl Tuckerson. Okay, I, I like Carl Tuckerson. Um, but, you know, but we'll go after WikiLeaks. We'll go after alternative media. We'll let you keep your monopoly and, and we'll throttle people and we'll disappear people. We'll ban people. We'll, you can keep your monopoly, but you got to read the script, and it works for them. That's one of the reasons why they sell their soul. I mean, the, the, the Washington Post, I mean, if it wasn't Jeff Bezos, it would be gone, okay? It's just a rag, okay? It'd be gone. Exactly. Okay? And, 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 and this is what we have over and over again. But then we have a consortium news.com, uh, you know. That is an amazing hard, publication. Hard working people. Joe Loria, the, the new editor over there, awesome guy, good friend of mine. I mean, they're in the trenches. These people are not, you know, the good thing is a lot of people that write for that, they're retired. They have pensions. They got pensions from, you know, the baby boomer pension, okay, which will never happen again. Um, and then I won't get it. Um, they do it for love, passion. I've talked to some of the writers. It's passion. I say, how, you know, why do you do it? You don't have to do this. I know you've got grandchildren. You know, Ray McGovern, you know, look at Ray. You know, Amazing human up. being. They beat him up. He's almost 80 years old, for God's sake. I saw the video. You don't need to brutalize people. No, it's an example. You step out of line. And plus, with 26 years experience at the CIA, I bet exactly. he's got a few things to say. Okay? Exactly. That's what they're worried about. They're worried about that. Because he, Ray McGovern's standing in the public is impeccable. I mean, we all know that, okay? And you know, even when they were manhandling him and dislocating his shoulder, he did manage to actually get out coherent sentences about uh, black site in Thailand. I was just amazed I at had his him ability on my to program. do that. I had him on my program a, a few days later, and he came out with such good humor. Um, uh, and, and his, he showed his uh, uh, wrists. They were purple. Uh. Purple. Oh my God! It's absolutely what, what insane. What did we become? What did we become? And you know, it's, it's interesting um, with your perspective as a journalist because um, when we talk about the media and their, uh, you know, just being so, I guess, homogenated or, or monotonized, it's really, really interesting as well to see them. Uh, not putting two and two together that the prosecution of WikiLeaks and of Julian Assange for doing effective journalism is also going to impact them. They seem to be blind to this. And do you think that that's because they just assume it won't happen to them? Or or what? How can they be so yeah, blind? I, I mean, it, it, it kind, of, kind of cuts both ways, doesn't it? I mean, wow, Julian Assange uh, uh, didn't play by the rules. He kind of got out of line and look what they did to him. So, I mean, it, it, this is what they, they absorbed the wrong lesson. The, the lesson should be stand up straight and speak truth, okay? Absolutely. And there may be consequences, but they draw the opposite conclusions. That, oh, I'm not going to get out of line. Uh, you know, I have I have a great gig going here. Um, uh, oh, I, oh, oh, here, I just got an, another message on WhatsApp. Oh, okay, I know what to write now. Okay, and that's exactly it. Okay. No, I mean, I don't want to go into it here because I wouldn't want to be very precise. But I, you know, I could go tell you. Um, um, 
writers for the Wall Street Journal, the New York Times, the Washington Post, like we couldn't identify who are the point pe people for the deep state. I mean, they, they come out, you know, instantly, you know, and, and create these talking points. It's what it's standard. OK. And people that like ourselves that watch the news, we know this. It, it's like a, 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 a signal. OK. Now, so when the, Joe Smith over the Washington Post says this, oh, that's a signal that's coming from the CIA. OK, because Absolutely. they're just they're just a conveyor belt. They're just a conveyor belt. It, and I think that um, another aspect of that, specifically with the Washington Post and the CIA, is at, is the re uh, recognition that this is not based on pr a profit model. As you mentioned before, right. the uh, Washington Post is not trying to get a bunch of viewers and subscribers. If they did, then they would break that monotony and actually raise their head up and try to strive for real investigative journalism. But when you have somebody like Jeff Bezos, who also has a contract with the CIA for a cloud uh, with Amazon... Yeah, right. when you have that individual buying uh, the Washington Post for for him a trivial amount, you really do see that this is not about you know a profit. Uh, this is not profit driven. It is to control the social discourse, and I think that that is bit has been on. You know, you can see that on YouTube. You can see it in multiple different uh, platforms and outlets. Well, you can see it happening with Facebook as well. Okay, absolutely. I mean, I find it really, really terrifying what's happening is because um, I, I know uh, some really good people, uh, Patrick Henningsen over at 20, 21st Century um, Wire um, uh, News. I mean, he's been through the ringer over and over and over again. Um, I don't always agree with what he has to say, but it's, it's, it's well thought out. And, 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 let, and, let, the, and let readers decide and, and, have, and have a debate, have a discussion here. Because in Washington, I mean, the only time I come across the Washington Post is when someone says, hey, have you read this, <laughs> this sack of shit here? Read this. <laughs> that's how I come across the Washington Post. Sorry for my language. But they, no, that's the only time I ever come across it is, is, is this, you know, pure contempt of what they're reporting. OK, particularly, Absolutely. Uh, particularly on where I live, which is sensitive to me. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, and I think as well, like, um, not only does, and just returning to Jeff Bezos for a moment, um, not only is he somebody who has so much control at, for, over the Washington Post, we also had uh, legacy press outlets and, and establishment media actually shouting that he should be nominated to be uh, director of the CIA before we, you know, had Haspel and all of that. Yeah, no, I mean, I, actual press outlets were, were advocating for that. So to the state of journalism is absolutely Sad oh, I guess. Well, okay. Well, using that logic, Tony Soprano should be a Supreme Court justice. Okay. Exactly. Fine. Exactly. <laughs> At least there wouldn't be any pretense anymore. Okay. I mean, that's, that's one of the things I find really interesting. And that's one of the reasons why I like Julian because, you know, I've, uh, you know uh, uh, the, the U.S. talks about democracy promotion and stuff like that. And like, I tell people, it's only people in the media and in the greater Washington, D.C. area that ever say that because nobody believes it anymore. OK, it, 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 this, this, these people are so imprisoned in their in their rhetoric. OK, and that's why I get in trouble repeatedly with uh, like the uh, regulatory people in the U.K., they, they're really not nice to me. And, um, and, um, and you know, I, I, I have to be careful what I have to say about that. But um, uh, and I, I just say I just call it as I see it. And, you know, I, I think to use the American phrase, like it, it's balls and strikes. OK, that's what I just that's how I see it. OK. And uh, and I'm more than willing to be pushed, have someone push back. I mean, I was on I was on um, uh, after the MH, uh, MH17 uh, uh, flight was shot down the Malaysian aircraft. Uh, was shot down over um, uh, Ukraine. I was on uh, New Day with Chris Cuomo. I, and, you know, wow. I, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was hilarious. I mean, he he thought it was going to be a walk in the park, and I just ripped into him. I mean, I well, I got I got so many messages about that. My boss called me, and she said, um, so how'd it go? And I said, well, I didn't. I don't know if I won, but I certainly didn't lose. And Absolutely. there were CNN people in the studio here in Moscow, and their eyeballs were like this during the interview because like they were standing around the monitor and they said, wow, you really gave it to him. He said, well, he was, he didn't know what he was talking about. And, you know, it, it was, the funny thing was, is that I was told later that he was hoping that I would pull out my earpiece, take off my microphone and, and walk out. He actually almost did that himself because wow. I just gave it back to him. I just said, can you give me a real question? Just a real question, because you sound like a stenographer from the U.S. State Department. You know, and that isn't exactly... Anyone would talk to him that way. 
that's exactly the way uh, John Pilger described the media is a stenographer for the for the state. And I think as well, like your analogy there of just giving Cuomo back the facts, that's a really great analogy for what WikiLeaks does in a sense, is you know just calling out the reality as it is. This is what I want all of our viewers to, to keep in mind is um, um, in, a, in a, a few hours, about three hours, I'm going to make a crosstalk um, with my, uh, Mark Sloboda and Dmitry Babich, which will be, will be guests on, your, uh, on this cast. Um, and we, we, we've often reflected them. The, uh, one of the reasons why the mainstream media is very hesitant to engage us because we know their arguments. They don't know ours. We know their arguments just as well as we know our own arguments. And that's why it, um, it's very hard hitting when it happens. And very often that's one of the reasons why it looks like we're talking in parallel. Okay. And Absolutely. Because, because it, well, no, I'll give you a, a real, a really short example. I was going to a, um, a, a meeting and it was a, in a hotel. And a, unfortunately, the only time I ever see CNN is on in hotels and airports. And they were talking about the, uh, Crimea has been invaded by 25,000 troops. And, and I just thought, well, they're there under law, international law. In 1991, when Ukraine became an independent country, uh, foreign forces were allowed to stay in Crimea. That's nothing new. Everybody knows that. And see, that's a simple fact that is never mentioned, is that they, under international law, a treaty that was signed, it was updated three times, but it's not there. Or um, uh, um, uh, 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 looking at Ukraine, um, never wanting to talk about there was a coup there. It, you know, it, it, was, it was a revolution. No, it wasn't, it was a forced regime change. And nobody wants to talk about that. Um, and, 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 but in this case, I mean, actually quite a few very smart people said, yeah, it was pretty open too. Um, but still, you'll never get the mainstream to, to say, well, in retrospect, looking at all of the facts now, no, that they won't do that. Because it's prestige, um, only when it's the most blatant mistake, like what, what was it, um, uh, um, you know, during all of these investigations I've had here, I mean, the the, well, the mainstream media has been caught you know, with uh, in, in, uh, incorrect information well, and leaks over and over again. And, you know, and, and now, you know, having a um, uh, going back and correcting themselves, it's happened so often now people are dulling by it. Just yeah, and it used to take decades to unfold where we go back and say, oh, well, well, that narrative we spread 10 years ago was false. But now it's happening in real time as it's being produced. And that is like um, a, fr a friend told me it was the wickification of our, of our culture in the digital age. And it's been um, it seems that the, the establishment has been unable to adapt to that. And that's why they are panicking about WikiLeaks. No, because they're they think their that voice. they're morally superior to the rest of us. We're just plebes. OK. You know, just to get going back to Chris Cuomo, you know, don't read those emails. Okay, exactly. that's private property, but we'll tell you because we're journalists. That, that that's an extraordinary moment. It, uh, it, it basically that on the tombstone of journalism, that's going to be you know a plasma that will play over and over and over again. Okay, because that for me that was a stunning, stunning thing to say. And 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 absolutely, and, yeah. And all of his peers more or less agreed with it. OK, um, you know, thank goodness for WikiLeaks because it's a trusted source. You know, that used to be, well, CNN still calls themselves that, but really it's WikiLeaks. You can trust Julian Assange. You can trust WikiLeaks. They will keep your confidence. And that's what we're and that's what journalism was all about. And it's all gone. And that's why WikiLeaks has replaced it. OK, and the legacy media cannot come to terms with that. OK, it would take too much courage. All right. Absolutely. And, 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 and people have just gotten used to not having any courage anymore. OK, it, it's, it's extraordinary. You know, they have to look over both sides of their shoulders to make, you know, the corporations and, and uh, the deep state. OK, and make sure you get go right down that straight line there. OK, and, exactly. isn't, it, isn't it really shameful to watch, you know, like watching um, Morning Joe on uh, MSNBC um, uh, during the Soviet Union, they had people's courts. And they would have a judge. And then they would have these like um, um, peers with the judge. There would be a worker. There would be an, a, a far, what, what we would call a farmer, maybe a textile worker. And they would be, you know, right next to the judge. They didn't have any legal competence, okay? But the judge would say, he's guilty. And then everyone uh, on, on the panel, we go, that's right, he's guilty. And that's, uh, that's, that's morning Joe. You notice that? Morning Joe, they Absolutely. say something. Everybody on the panel, that's right, that's right, that's right. 
I mean, and these are grown people, okay? I mean, presumably they have some kind of higher education, but you wouldn't know that by their behavior. And then it's just like, well, I saw on Twitter today, you know, it's just like, you know, I don't care about snippets, you know, and that's one of the things I have a problem with Twitter is that it, it, it condenses everything. I mean, some of the smartest people I've known in my life have gone over to that and it, it's like, it's like ch children talking to each other. We need to have, you know, one of the things that, um, I'm a big fan of Jordan Peterson. I hope that doesn't put too many people off. But one, one thing that, you know, we, they've learned is that you can have a long conversation with someone and people will watch. They will get involved in it. You don't have to go to a 40 second sound bite. You can actually have a discussion and a, and a, a heat, dialogue, you a know. Di but that's, that's when we learn, is when we're challenged. That's when we learn. Exactly. And, and that's how you better yourself. Say, you know, I, I, I can be persuaded by on that point. That's a good point. It, and it, and it enlarges and enriches my worldview. Why are we afraid of that? And that's what's happened. WikiLeaks, like I said from the very beginning, for me, it was such a relief is that I'm not crazy. <laughs> this is all actually true. Yeah. It, it actually is worth it. It was even more elaborate and deep than I ever could have imagined. But my gut told me this is right. Okay. And that was the, that, that is the, like an earthquake. It was an earthquake that in, 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 in all of the buildings on the, on the, on the, on the landscape were mainstream media and they, they collapsed. Okay. They had this moment of just boom and the smoke coming up. And they've been trying to rebuild ever since then. And what they do is they will dis they destroy people in the process. I mean, the number of people that have been in uh, alternative media that tell me these really awful stories of demonetized, throttled, disappeared. And these are upright people. You don't always have to agree with them. This is, this is why it, it, what makes it authoritarian, totalitarian, is that there is the truth. Well, there is no the truth. We work to get there and it's a process. It's not the end, it's a process. And that's what we should be doing. And this is what WikiLeaks is all about. Absolutely. It's getting, getting to the truth. It's Definitely. A deep, it's a process, okay? And it, I don't see it as partisan either. Okay. Not Absolutely not. The, I, I mean, the, the, the sort of motto of Dispute Media is that the truth has no bias. And that's why WikiLeaks is so dangerous because they just public, uh, publish the truth. And it's incredibly volatile, obviously, as we've discussed in this entire segment. We have a, about nine minutes left. What are some of your thoughts on not only how people can support WikiLeaks, but the, the, um, you know, incredible loss it would be if Julian Assange were silenced um, indefinitely and or if, you know, if anything were to happen where WikiLeaks would stop publishing or be able to function, the, the depth of the loss that that would be for the public and the public's interest. Um, I'd like to hear your thoughts on that. You know, I, I, I think that, um, first of all, those of us that are engaged are, are going to constantly, like I said, I don't usually do these kinds of forums. Um, keep the word out. Keep, the, keep talking about it. Um, I'm, I'm going to be, after this, I'm going to be telling everyone to take a look at it. Uh, I, I hope a lot of people came on to watch. But I, I think that the deep state and the intelligence community and the, and the media should be careful what they wish for. Because if WikiLeaks is shut down, if Julian Assange is in one form or another disappeared, um, there's going to be an, an, a new underground. And, 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 and it'll be harder to watch. You can watch WikiLeaks. You can see what they're doing. They're transparent, okay? That's the beauty of it, transparency. But the next wave may not be as transparent. And, 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 and the, the, the people in power should be worried about that. Because what are you gonna do? Are you just gonna set up the camps, okay? Are you gonna start arresting us, okay? Really? I mean, it's not inconceivable. That's why they have the security state, okay? Is that in, in the moment they need, they swoop down, everybody, all the troublemakers are gone, okay, and everything will be harmonious. But I've seen societies like that. There's never harmony. And There's I feel like, yeah, that's definitely one of the things that people don't seem to really grasp is the gravity of that type of reality and how close we are to really um, seeing a potential future that looks like that. And WikiLeaks is one of the, the last bastions of protection of free speech and, and of, uh, you know, true journalism and information that is protecting the public. And this is the other thing. It's not just, oh, that they're good journalists, 
or oh, they, they really, you know, kicked a few hornet's nests. They are act, the information they're providing is actually, you know, arming people with it, with the um, evidence of crimes against them by their governments. And that is would if that was lost, it would be irreplaceable. It, it, it and, and, and then one of the things I just love to do uh, to pundits is that they talk about how wrong it is to uh, have these leaks of emails. And I just say, well, well, can we put that to a side? Let's talk about what were in the emails, okay? Let's talk about the documents themselves. We can exactly. talk about the, uh, you know, fine, that's a different subject, but that's the only subject they want to talk about. They don't want to talk about the content of anything, all right? I mean, you know, over the last few years, I mean, I'm so glad they have search engines and those things because I, you you could spend your whole life reading the everything that's been released by WikiLeaks. That would be a whole lifetime endeavor. Thank God they have the word uh, the search engines in there. Um, um, yeah, I mean, when I think I, I remember Julian Assange actually tweeting out at one point that you know he said you know it's we cannot read uh, all of the documents that that we publish obviously they verify them but he said that there are so many things that the viewers the public find that he has no idea about uh you know like significant finds that that are made that are personal that are public all yeah, sorts but, of but the interesting thing was when the, the when they they see the the vaults when those documents came out well i took a look at them my dear dear i'm just not so intelligent enough to understand them, okay? Um, I'm not a scientist, but you know, I know people that say, oh, wow, look at this. It's like being in a candy shop. They understand it. And that's, what, that's what's really important here is that there's that milieu of people that understand how the, um, the technology of those, um, uh, of those leaks. I don't, I'm more in the political realm. But um, yes, I mean, um, uh, there, is a, there will be people out there that will be able to, um, uh, like I've said, maybe the third time, it kind of confirm what you thought all along, which is really important. Um, and we'll have to, and we can learn how the 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 powers that be are going to try to up their game to make sure it doesn't happen again. Okay. Um, exactly. Yeah. And, and that's what we have to keep an eye on as well. Um, like I said, you know, on even days I can be kind of uh, optimistic because we're doing this after all. On odd days, it just feels like it's so overwhelming. And, you know, we have limited resources. They have endless resources. Well, one and, thing I think... And they don't have a moral compass. I, I, I really want to stress that. Because that's what, you know, we have to get to the basics here. Okay? I, I, journalism has become so nihilistic. All right? And, and, and it shouldn't be that way. It, you have to put yourself out there. You have to put your, 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 your being and your essence into, into journalism. And that's what made journalism really great. Edward R. Morrow. OK, uh, one of the greatest journalists of all time. I mean, and when it came to McCarthyism, he was one of the first that said, stop it. It's a disgrace what you're doing. And you know what? It's people did. But it took someone like that. Julian Assange is like uh, uh, is an Edward R. Morrow type character, an archetype. Absolutely. Okay. Well, I think that is a fantastic thought to end on, I think, because um, and it's been a, an absolute pleasure to speak with you this evening. Thank you so much for joining us. As you said, you don't do this very often. So it's especially um, a privilege for us to be able to speak with you in this way. I really had a great time. Well, have me um, next year. Have me, have me in the next vigil. Give me a call. Great. I, I hope that we don't have to have one. Oh, but yes, good absolutely morning. do. I absolutely you, will. You, you're doing, you and Susie are doing a wonderful, wonderful job. Uh, and I, I hope you're drinking a lot of coffee and Red Bull because it's a long, <laughs> lot of talking. Yeah.